Welcome everyone, Tim Anderson here, aka Renfail, and today we are about to embark upon an epic journey in the Lord of the Rings Online MMORPG. For those of you who have never played, this entire video is designed for you. This is the ultimate beginner's guide. We're going to be walking you through all of the most important things you need to know to get started in this game. Things like, what race should I play? What class should I play? Where should I start? Do I need to worry about grouping up with other players? Do I need to worry about gear? Should I be a crafter? What about vocations? What about virtue traits? What about the the skill lines and, and this, that, or the other? And, ah, help! That's what today's video is all about. So, if you're a new player, strap in. This is the guide you're going to want to watch. Without further ado, we're going to dive in. Before we get going, though, as always, if you're new, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update as I continue to provide guides for Lord of the Rings Online, Star Wars Zero Public, all the RPGs, MMORPGs, CRPGs, and other games I play, tabletop, TV shows, books, reviews, and beyond. Don't forget the Discord, Patreon page, all that good stuff. So, let's say you're sitting down for the very first time, you've never played this game before, and you just want something that's really easy to play, a really easy way to get into the game. Well, right off, you have your options of races here on the left. Man, High Elf, Dwarf, Stout Axe, Hobbit, Elf, or Bjorning. Uh, I would suggest just starting off with a man character right off the bat. Uh, not as long-lived as Elves, and sturdy as Dwarves, or resilient as Hobbits, men are nevertheless renowned for their courage and resourcefulness. You do get the Gift of Men bonus, the Diminishing of Mankind uh, debuff. You are easily inspired, and you get plus 15 might because you are strong as a man. And then as far as classes go, I would suggest just right out of the gate, just start a champion. The reason for this is because the champion is a fairly survivable class in terms of being able to take a lot of hits, and they do quite a bit of DPS um, with dual-handed weapons. Uh, and it's really easy to get going into the game. So without further ado, we're just going to click that continue button, and we're going to get right into character creation process. Now over on the left you're going to have some options to choose the origin of your character where you're from the Breen Lands, the Dale Lands, Gondor, or Rohan. This does not matter. It's literally just for roleplay purposes. Although it does change the coloring of your skin and your eye color and things of that nature to represent sort of where you are from in the world. But it has no impact whatsoever on your gameplay. So just click I'm going to click Breland for now. We're going to give him a generic name and call him uh, Ignemio, which I may have a character named that. We'll find out in a minute. You can change your uh, head, hairstyle, all those different things here. Um, I think we're going to just give him a beard. Actually, my facial hair is over here. I was clicking on the wrong one. Give him a beard. Other than that, uh, maybe change his hairstyle. Yeah. Something a little more... Uh, Oh yeah, I could dig it. That looks pretty good. Uh, and then I'm just going to click Create Character. That name is taken. That's what I thought. Uh, well, let's call him... Uh, Renfarn. There we go. So we have our level 1 man champion. We're going to click that Enter Middle Earth button and we're going to dive into the tutorial. The chance encounter with brigands upon the road leads to captivity. You awaken with the ranger Strider before you. As he urges you to act quickly, you realize you have become involved in matters much greater than yourself. So right off the bat, we are being thrown into an encounter with a character that everyone should know, whether you've read the books or watched the films. Aragorn, son of Arathorn, otherwise known as Strider. You'll notice here on the bottom left you have a chat window, which you can resize accordingly. I always like to make it a little bit bigger. You can put it wherever you want as well. You can drag it around if you don't like where it is initially placed. As part of customizing the UI you can get into later. And you'll notice that uh, the dialogue that we just were uh, listened to is also available in text form down here, where it says, A chance encounter with brigands upon the road leads to captivity. You awaken with the ranger's strider before you, and as he urges you to act quickly, you realize that you have become involved in matters much greater than yourself. And now he's repeating some dialogue. There's no time to lose. Hurry, we must hasten if we are to escape. You must make haste. More enemies will come soon. Um, and right off the bat, we're given a movement dialogue pop-up here. So 
typical movement uh, for any MMORPG that you might have ever played. It's the WASD. Um, you know, W is forward, S moves backwards, A turns uh, left, D turns right. You can also hold the right click uh, on the mouse button and turn your character like so. And if you hold the left click, you'll spin the camera around your character. So this is the basic movement. The scroll button of the mouse will eventually scroll in and out, but right now, um, there we go. We had to pan the camera around to get to the point where we actually could scroll it in or out like that. And then if you want the name of your character to be visible, the N button, N for name, on the keyboard um, it is helpful, but they're not showing it right now in the tutorial, so uh, I think I might have uh, uh, spoke too early on that one. In any case, once you've gotten past the movement, click OK, and then we're going to go ahead and move forward. Uh-oh, brigand guards are attacking, it says. And now it gives you the camera movement uh, stuff that we just went through. All right? Quests and quest strings. This is really, really important to the overall game. Now, as you play the game, you're going to come across lots and lots of quests. There are regular quests. There are crafting quests. There are uh, quest hubs. There are... Um, instance quests, there are epic quests, and more. So it says here, many characters and even objects will offer quests and information. Right click anyone or anything with a ring icon to receive or advance a quest. Blue quest rings tell you that the NPC may have helpful reminders of what you need to be doing. Epic story quests will have a flaming ring to signify the importance of the quest for the main story. So they give you some icons here. The one on the right hand side, which is this regular old uh, ring, the yellow ring, that's your normal quest. The blue quest is usually an in the middle of doing it quest or an informational quest. And then of course that flaming icon they talk about, that's for the epic book quest. The epic book quests are slightly different than the quest you would normally have. Um, and there's also down here on the bottom, it shows you this icon that you can click, which brings up your quest log. Now you can move this wherever you want. Um, you can also hit the, um, I believe it's the L button. Yes, the L button or the uh, quest log icon down here is how you open this up. And right now we're on the introduction quest. So if we were to click this plus tab, it would open that up. We could then click on that quest and it would give us a breakdown of what we're supposed to do. Now on the top right, we have the quest tracker, which gives us that very brief um dialogue where it says search the satchel for weapons right click the satchel to loot it but then within the quest log we have a greater breakdown of all of the information that you would need a satchel is on the floor near your rescuer strider told you to search the satchel for any weapons and collect its contents for you will need to defend yourself during this daring escape and then the background says while traveling through the chetwood you were waylaid by brigands and taken captive you now find yourself in a cell searching for a means of escape and that's the the part um where we were told at the very beginning that we had been waylaid by enemies. All right, so we're going to move forward. It says looting. Containers and fallen foes can be looted. Look for sparkly effects to indicate that an object has loot on it. Right-click the object you wish to loot, and then right-click the items to loot them. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to move up here to this satchel. We're going to go ahead and right-click, which is what they want us to do. We're going to open that up, and it says you've obtained an item. Any item you obtain will be contained within your inventory. You can access your inventory via the interface at the bottom of the screen, which is the showing you, it's prompting you to click the open bag down here in the bottom right. You'll notice that right down here. It says, um, in your inventory, you can double click a piece of armor or weapon to equip it to your character, or you can open the character panel with the C button and drag the item into the appropriate equipment slot. It says, note that if you already have an item equipped, the new item will become equipped and the old item will return to your inventory. So here we have the item window from the body that we were going to loot, and we have an item here called a gear satchel, which says it contains basic equipment when we hover over it, so we're going to loot all. It's now put that into our inventory. Now, I have a whole bunch of clutter in here because of having played over the years, <laughs> so we'll reorganize the inventory really quick like so, um, and these are the two items that it just dropped for us, um, which is the... Um, knife and rusted long sword. It also gave us a gear satchel, which uh, is one of these, I believe. I don't know where it went. Um, we'll sort that out later. Um, anyway, we have these two items. So it says, speak with Strider. Hurry, friend. 
We must test your will to fight. You are not the only prisoner here, friend. My fellow Amder and I have come to rescue a hobbit, but it turns out he is not the hobbit we have been tracking. This escape will be dangerous for all of us, for I know that a great evil lurks here. I have heard of its movements, and I can feel its presence. Do you know how to fight? You should practice with me to get a feel for that weapon. So it says here, press I to open your inventory to see the weapon or left click on the bag icons at the bottom of your screen. So we need to go ahead and equip the weapons that we were given. So we're going to go ahead and hit that C button to open up our character panel. Now we already have a basic table knife equipped, but that's okay. We're going to take this rusted long sword and we're going to put it down here in that main slot. And you'll notice that the icon in my character here went ahead and changed and now I'm wielding a sword. Now I also have a regular old knife that I can use and I can put this in my offhand and you'll notice that I now have two weapons. Now remember this is because the champion character can dual wield. So we can go ahead and um, use two weapons which not all characters can do. But we can because of the class that we chose. So we've done that. We're going to close it down. Right click on Strider again. Hurry friend. We we're gonna click your will to fight. We're gonna click the continue quest button now. It says right click on an enemy once to begin auto attacking. An auto attack is a weak damage skill, but each class has more powerful skills available as well. Move close to the enemy if you intend on using melee weapons and attacks. Your skills are located in the quick slot bar on the bottom center of your screen. Those are these ones represented on here by the 1 to 12 slots here. Using these special abilities will greatly assist you in defeating your enemies. So right now you'll notice that this icon here is for the uh, auto attack. And we can click that and we will now enter our auto attack mode and you'll notice we are attacking Strider. Then if we want to use our abilities we could just click the 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 or we could use the numbers on the keypad. Not the number pad, but the numbers above your WASD, and you know, hit number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, respectively, to use those abilities. Now, the auto attack did enough damage that we were able to complete the quest without needing to worry about that. So we've effectively shown Strider that we can handle ourselves in combat. So we'll go ahead well and right-click him Let again. Press on. Your skill in battle is most impressive. Now listen closely. I will need your help in getting out of here. When we leave this jailhouse, the real battle will begin. So he wants us to follow Strider outside. So he's going to say, come, this way, through here. And he wants us to follow him outside. We can go ahead and do that. Oh, there was a pop-up for doors and portals, and I went too quickly. So let's pause and read that. Doors and portals can be used to travel to other areas of the game. If a door can be opened, your mouse cursor will change when you hover over the mouse, uh, hover the door. To open the door, right click. Portals are designed by a large yellow sparkling effect. To use a portal, simply run through it, which is what we did. And it's probably closed behind us now, so we can't see it. So I, I, I ran, ran for it a little too quickly. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right, so speak with Strider. Let's move forward. Here is where we must part ways. You should free the two innocent hobbits also being held captive here, Celandine Brandybuck and Mundo Sackville Baggins. I must search for signs of the Servant of Mordor and learn what I can of this connection to the Black Wolves. Amdir, my fellow ranger, is making a safe path for us. He will be waiting for us at the main gate. Free Celandine first. It is Mundo they want alive, for they have mistaken him for someone more valuable. When you have both hobbits safe, seek Amdir near the main gate. Then we will make for Archit, where we will find safety. All right, so the gate just opened, and he prompts us that we should find her beyond that gate. And then we should find him after we have saved her, and he disappears. Now, we now have our first actual encounter with a bad guy. So what do we do? Well, first and foremost, targeting. It hasn't told us about targeting yet. So one of the ways that we can target is we could left-click the individual and it will show a targeting ring around them like so and then up here on the top left you'll notice that it says black wolf ruffian has been selected if we don't have anything just hit escape and there's nothing there right now we could also run up and if he attacks us it will then target him you could also hit the tab button 
and it will target him accordingly. The tab button targets the nearest NPC. So once you have the individual targeted that you know you want to attack, you can go ahead and move up into melee range in this case. Now we are not attacking at the moment. Notice that the reticle around the NPC is simply orange. That means he is attacking us. If we want to attack, we either need to do one of two things. We need to click the auto attack button to start auto attack mode, or we need to use one of our abilities. Now in this case, we haven't actually used any of our abilities yet, so let's go ahead and use Swift Strike. Now the moment I use this ability, it's going to enter us into combat mode, which will automatically trigger auto attack mode. So let's just go ahead and click number one, and now we are auto attacking. And we can also then click number two. Boom. We have defeated Kelandine's captor. Celandine, sorry. It's Celandine, Kelandine, everybody pronounces differently. And now I get a pop-up for experience points. When you defeat enemies or complete quests, you gain experience. Earn enough, and your powers and stats will increase by leveling up. When your character levels, you will gain access to new skills and be able to equip bigger and better armor and weapons. So the experience bar is all the way down there at the bottom. We can click OK. We earned a little bit of experience towards our next level. Now we can move on. There's a chicken. Bok, bok. Another bad guy. So let's move up to him. I'm going to hit the one button again. I'm going to hit the two button. And we've killed the next bad guy. Move forward. We have another one. Alright, escaped its cage. Alright, I didn't sign up for this. All right, drama, it says here. Many stories in Middle-earth will unfold before your eyes. Be sure to pay attention to these events to gain insight into your quests. Sometimes you will be momentarily halted in order to watch very important scenes and stories. This is a very important component to the Lord of the Rings Online. Um, they used to call it the hope and dread system. And any time you entered into a scenario where there was a lot of dread, meaning like, uh, you know, um, Nazgul or Black Riders, you know, things that would cause your character to be afraid. Your character would stop and begin to cower in fear, and there would be an animation sequence unfold. Now, they don't necessarily call it the same thing these days. They call it drama these days, um, but it is essentially the same um, scenario here. Um, sometimes you will be forced to stop. They'll take control of your character. They'll pause your character th so that you can see the animation that's going to go before you. And later on in the game, not in the early stages, but once you get into Moria and beyond, they will actually start. Uh, they actually started adding cutscenes into the game, uh, where you'll actually enter into an area. You'll be going along, and all of a sudden, the game will go into a cutscene that you'll watch before you get back into controlling your character again. But here in the early stages of the game, that doesn't happen. It's just these drama scenes. So we're going to click OK on that. We're going to move forward. We're going to go ahead. And deal with this last ruffian take that you stinking thief all right we have defeated Kelanine's captors and it wants us to talk to her hello there thank you thank you thank you I was starting to worry that this little misadventure would be the end of me those brigands are appalling folk uh, my friend Mundo's nearby I think we must save him as well the brigands have been saying terrible things we'll need a distraction though and I know just what to do I just need a bit of flame so she's going to grab a torch and a place to put it, and she's going to chuck it up on the roof. That ought to get their attention. So she just set the roof on fire. Follow me! Don't you move one curled hair, Hobbit! So all those guys just ran off. Fire! Fetch water! And she's like, there he is! So we're going to run in, and we got to defeat Edric. <gasps> I have defeated Mundo's captors. It's about time you got here. All right, we can talk to Mundo. Uh, was I expected to, to rescue myself? Come on, you big clodpole. Get me out of here before those ruffians return. They want to sell me off like a sack of potatoes. So now it says our next objective is to find Strider and Amdir. So we're going to follow the two hobbits. Uh-oh. Back! Go back to the shadow, fallen king! 
This is one of those drama sequences. But soon I shall have power over you. Omdia, no! Ah, the halflings. Which is the baggins that was promised me? Accursed flames! This Dunedain will suffer for an owl. Will suffice, sorry. <laughs> I read it wrong. So notice we're cowering in fear right now, and I can't control my character. And then Aragorn ran out. Be gone, foul spawn. You will not harm these folk. Now we can control our character again, because they wanted us to watch that animation sequence. Redfawn, come quick. Talk to Amdir. Good. The hobbits are out of danger. I, I am glad. Do not concern yourself with me. The greatest danger has passed. The Nazgul fear those who wield fire. Ugh. And he collapses. Oh no! Alright, we're supposed to talk to Strider now. I regret that I was but a moment too late. But all is not lost. Amdir has been pierced with a Morgul blade. This does not bode well. We need to leave this place at once. Archer is nearby and will serve as a good resting place while Amdir recovers. Quickly, follow me. Wounded by a black rider, the ranger Amdir escaped with his charges into the wild, making his way back to the village of Archit. There, Captain Brackenbrook, a retired sellsword, has allowed Strider and his companions to stay and take respite from their cares. All right, we have now entered into the area known as Archit, which is our next questing area. Now, this is an actual, what we just went through a moment ago was the introduction quest line. Um, this is technically the open world at this point, and there are things we can do here within Archit, um, but it's still the starting version of Archit, because in order to get beyond here into the world at large, we will be completing a series of introduction quests within this zone. All right, but first and foremost, we need to talk to Kelly Brandybook. Thank goodness you're awake. That fellow on deer seems very ill. You were exhausted after what happened last night, but that ranger got us all safe to Archit in the end. I was terribly worried for his friend. Amdir looks very ill. You should check on him if you like. He's just over there to the west of where I'm standing. Do you see him there across the lane? Now from here, um, we can accept and we're going to be able to choose some items here. And you're going to notice right off the bat that there are different tier Well, not different tiers, but different types of armor. We have a, a heavy item, heavy armor. A medium armor piece, a light armor piece, and a further light armor piece. So depending on what kind of character you're playing, what class you're playing, you would choose an appropriate reward. We're going to end up choosing the chainmail breastplate, but we actually have to turn in the quest first. So here it says the quest guiding system. The quest guide system will help point you to the general area of your tracked quest objectives using the map and radar displays. Once you are in the general area for a quest target, the area name below your mini-map will begin to glow. Additionally, the quest tracker helps you check your progress on up to 10 quests at a time. You can open your quest journal to view the details of a quest in the tracker by clicking the icon next to the quest. Try right-clicking on the icon for even more options. Please note that you can add and remove quests and deeds from the tracker using the appropriate journal. So we would go over here and right click on that ring icon and find all these options that we could choose. We could also just click that left icon and it's going to open up the quest log which we've previously had 
uh, looked at earlier. Um, and from here, they have all these options of showing completed quests and so on and so forth. You know, we already know how to expand this because we talked about this earlier. So from here, it says Amdir, very pale and wounded, is sitting in an archet near the Mad Badger Inn. You should check on him, for he was stabbed last night while helping to rescue you and the two hobbits from the Blackwolds. And then you get a little bit of the background on the quest that you have at your disposal. Now, one of the things it was talking about was the the um, arrow icon on your map. Now, it's not going to show us that at the moment because we are literally on top of the objective, who is Amdir right here. Um, but uh, if, if it was a quest that was far away, we would have a white arrow on the map pointing us in the direction of our nearest quest objective. And then if... if it were a quest that was far enough away it would highlight on the map and we'll we'll get to that here in a little bit as we get deeper into this ultimate beginner's guide to lord of the rings online but for now there's a few things i wanted to show you in the menu uh that i think are worthwhile to um to customize the game and make things a little bit easier for you so first and foremost we're going to go into the social options and we're going to slow down we're going to scroll down uh very quickly here and we are looking for It's not the social options. So one of the things I want to show you now are some of the options that you can configure to sort of make your life a little bit easier here. So we're going to hit the escape button to bring up the options menu. We're going to click that options menu. We're going to go into chat. Um, and you can scroll down here and you can choose to like turn the profanity filter on or off. Here you can change the color of text if you would like change the opacity of the text windows some people like to configure these in different ways so um, i would highly recommend that you have send tells to im chat tab um, because that will have a different chat tab set up for ims which is down here on the chat window so if someone sends you a tell it shows up in a different tab um, but from here we actually want to go into uh, ui settings and there are a lot of options in here that you're going to want to look at if you want to um, configure the game a little bit better for yourself. So one of the things I like to do is the character name is turned off by default. So we're going to click that and turn it on. So now it, um, it's actually showing my character's name. That was something I was looking for earlier and I had forgotten that you had to turn it on in the options. So we're turning that on now. Um, then we can just scroll down even further in the UI settings here and we are looking for chat bubbles. Turn that on as well. That'll give us chat bubbles. Uh, text spoken in the Say Chat channel will also show up as a chat bubble for players within visual range. That will help you for communication when you're in um, environments where there are, are other players and so on and so forth. We're going to keep scrolling down from here because there are some additional effects that we want to um, pay attention to. Uh, dun 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 dun. You can show your connection status if you'd like to see how you're connected to the internet and what your lag is like, so on and so forth. Um, we are looking for... Always loot all. It's underneath the miscellaneous. Always loot all. If checked, you will automatically try to take the contents of any corpse or container that you open as if you had pressed the loot all button. This makes your life so much easier because you don't have to manually loot all of the corpses you come across when you're defeating enemies in combat. So I would highly suggest always loot all. And then I'm going to scroll down a little bit further here because I think that's all we need for now. So once we're done with that, we would click accept to go ahead and have those options turned on. So basically, turn your name on. Turn the you know loot all on. We're good to go. Those are the two big ones to think about. Let's talk to Amdir and continue our quest. Do not trouble yourself on my account. Uh, it is only a chill. So you awake at last, Rinfan. You earned your rest, for you fought bravely last night. As for myself, I found no peace in slumber. The blade of the Black Rider pierced only my shoulder, though not deeply. I am chilled, but it is no matter. Thank you for your concern, but it is Strider for whom I fear. He is charged with a great task, for he, but he tarries for my sake and for Archit's. So Amder assures us that he is well, but he is deathly pale and trembles with a chill, and he wants us to talk to Strider. There are too many deeds to be done, all pressing and none of them easy. I do not wish to leave Amder in this state, and, but Archit must be warned that the Black Wolves mean to raid the town. I should be seeking a different Baggins right now. So we get a little bit of insight. 
into Strider's quest, and here we choose our very first quest reward. So in this case, since I am a heavy armor wearing individual, I'm going to choose the scuffed chainmail breastplate, which is a huge upgrade from what I'm currently wearing. So we're going to choose that. We're going to click finish now. Perhaps you can help, my friend. Captain Brackenbrook will not heed my warnings. Um, the people of Archit will be in great danger when the Blackwolves execute the plan we witnessed last night. The captain here, a man named Brackenbrook, does not like my look and will not heed my warnings. Pray, speak to him on my behalf and see if we can rouse him. Every moment I spend here is a moment in which my true charge plunges blindly near to unfathomable peril. The black rider you saw last night seeks a baggins, and our friend Mundo is not the one. So, I'm going to go ahead and open up my inventory because I was given a piece of armor that I'm going to want to equip. Um, it does give you a quick tip here in inventory management. It tells you that you can use the edit mode button found in bag one to um, basically adjust the size of your bags. So let's go ahead and move these. You'll notice that my bag one is much bigger than all my other bags and that's because I have already set all of this up accordingly. But we can take a brief look at this um, to understand how this works. You'll also notice that I have a ton of space comparatively speaking and that's because I've been playing the game for a long time and so I have the maximum amount of inventory space. If you've started off for the very first time, you're probably going to be missing you're probably only going to have uh, six bags that are about the same size with these, uh, what is it, 15 slots per bag. Um, in order to unlock more slots, you would have to go into the Lotro store and purchase additional inventory slots. Once you've done so, you can click this gearbox button that they just talked about. And you'll notice that from here, we can choose to like add or subtract. You see what I did there? I just literally dragged and it dropped onto that bag three. So I took a slot from bag one, dropped it under bag three, and so on and so forth. So you can choose to do this however you want. Just add them. You can keep adding. You can make it all. I think you could even make it all. No, you can only do so many bags. Like you, I don't think you can do it all in one bag. So in any case, that's what they're talking about here is the, um, the, the management of that. When you're done, you just click that gearbox window again for edit mode. Okay. All right. Moving from there, we have that item we need to equip. Um, character panel opens up. We already covered the character panel. Go ahead and right click that scuffed chainmail breastplate to equip it. And notice that the, I the, the character icon changed here. I now have a piece of armor equipped. Um, and I now am wearing this piece of armor. Now, here's another tip for those of you who might be new to the game. Notice up here on the character panel, there's an equipment tab and a cosmetic outfit tab. The cosmetic outfit tab is very, very, very important. Um, everybody who plays this game long term will eventually want to customize the way their character looks with cosmetic outfits. You are automatically given two outfits by default, outfit one and outfit two, which is separate from the outfit that you're currently wearing, the equipment that you're wearing. Anytime you have armor, like what we just did, and you have an old piece, don't automatically throw it away or sell it. Put it somewhere to the side and save it. And that goes for weapons as well because these can be used to drag down in here to set up cosmetic items. So let's go to outfit one. I'm gonna, this is a very brief uh, overview where it's not, an, it's not a total overview of the outfit system. This is just a very quick why you would want to save your old stuff. So notice that um, I'm currently wearing this new breastplate, but I might not want to, I might not like that. I might want to use the leather jacket that I had before. So I would literally take the leather jacket that I had before and I would just drag it down onto the uh, chest icon here and it would put that back on. And then I would say, wear the following outfit. Now notice that it switched from wearing equipment outfit to wearing outfit one. And my character is now wearing that green breastplate once again. That's It's literally that simple. But I wanted to show it to you to give you guys a quick example of that as part of your, you know, the ultimate beginner's guide here. Ugh. I don't like the look of those rangers one bit. Did you wander in here last night with those rangers? I let them stay on account of the pale one's wounds. <clears throat> you say the black wolves mean to attack us, but I don't believe it. Not without proof. Those brigands have always been about. They're an unruly lot, but not murderous. I will not be attacking them without good reason. If you must, talk to folks around town and get their opinions. If they're on your side, I'll consider the ranger's warning. So he wants us, he, you know, he doesn't believe that these guys are a threat. And he wants us to run around and talk to some of the people in town to see what they think. What is this world coming to? If Captain Brockerbrook says we're safe, then we're safe. 
All right, she doesn't believe it. What? Before you try to fight, you must learn what skills you may from the trainer. Okay. I would like you to assist me, but I wish to make sure you're ready for the evil trials you will face. Time to hone your skills as a champion. Now, something else just happened. Up on the top left, it says traits. You have earned your first trait point. Trait points can be spent to enhance your character in the trait tree panel. Now, again, we're getting a pop-up down here in the bottom left uh, to open the traits panel, which we can click on here. Now, this is where we get into some of the really fun stuff about customizing your character, because there are lots of different ways you could play your character. So it, literally the class traits, it says, um, you can open this with the J button to spend your trait points on new skills and enhancement. You earn trait points every time you level. The first step is to choose a specialization for your class. Each specialization comes with some initial perks and a unique set of trait bonuses that will automatically unlock when you spend points in any of the three trees. Even though bonuses in the final tier of traits are exclusive to your specialization, you can still spend points in trees in which you are not specialized. You can change your trait specs, you can respec, or purchase new traits at any time outside of combat, so feel free to experiment to determine the combination that works best for you and your style of play. It's also worth noting that you notice here on the top right we have a number one and a number two. Now what this means is there's also a third tab which has this uh, Doors of Moria um, icon above it. So it just popped up a window. So you're allowed two traits for free. So if you're playing on a free-to-play account you can, and any other account, um, you can automatically have two different trait configurations that you can switch through at will. Spec 1 and Spec 2, if you would call them that. Now there's three different lines. So if you would also like to set up a third one, you can purchase an additional trait configuration for 100 mithril coins, which is really expensive in terms of real life currency. But that's if you are you know, playing the game full time and you really wanna get into everything that the game has to offer and you wanna have the ability to, to switch between all three specs on the fly, like maybe you have a solo spec, a group spec, and a raid spec, then you would have those set up accordingly. But for the purposes of playing the game like a normal person like you or I, you're only really ever gonna need one spec, which is your primary, you know, leveling spec and then you might want to set up a second spec as your grouping spec if you're going to be grouping up with people on a regular basis now every single class in the game has access to these three trait tree lines they are commonly referred to as the blue line the red line and the yellow line for the most part the yellow line is known as sort of like the utility line for every class. The red line is known as the DPS line for every class. And the blue line is kind of like the um, the most survivable, the solo build um, that gives you the survivability um, for most solo players. That is a generic, very general overview. You can obviously spec your character however you want. Now, one of the interesting things here about the trait tree panel is that when you're reading through it, you're going to notice here a few things. They're going to give you a very basic overview here where it shows you the passive abilities that you're going to earn if you work your way down through a tree. So it gives you a description here, like, for example, the martial champion. Um, damage soaking tank who prefers offense over defense. Uh, and it says the first ability called glory it, you get that when you have spent five ranks in the tree. So that's a, an ability that you get after you've earned five ranks. Um, the next one you would need to earn 10 ranks. This one you would need to earn 15 ranks. So on and so forth. All the way down until you've spent 35 points in that tree. So it shows you on the left these abilities that you're going to earn along the way. But if you click at the top, switch to the trait configuration panel with this button right here. It then takes you to... The actual trait tree now off on the left was in this area right here where my mouse is it's currently blank that's where those passive goes that we just looked at these passive abilities on the left those are going to show up here as you earn points down through the tree and then all of these represent abilities that you can get by spending points some of these abilities are active abilities 
that are going to be dragged down onto your hot bar and some of these are passive abilities um, that allow you to um, simply have a passive ability um, this one as an example is passive stalwart blade this just increases your vitality and your base parry chance so this is a quick way to take a look at the different you know overviews of the trees um, and then going down through here in the individual um, abilities that you're going to get to help you decide what you're going to choose now with the champion again the very generic overview that i gave you doesn't necessarily it's not gospel so read through everything here the martial champion being a damage soaking tank who prefers offense over defense the berserker is a single target crit based melee damage character and then the deadly storm is an aoe um build that inflicts lots of damage on foes and also does this uh flurry ability um so you just want to pick what it is that you want to choose um i'm probably for the purposes of this build that we're going to go through here um bum, 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 bum. i think we'll go with the martial champion because that'll give me a little bit of um i think hold up a minute let me look here on every strike see i remember on my main that i played a, a champion many many years ago the renewing strikes is pretty cool um because that does allow you to earn three percent of your maximum morale later on in the line but for now we'll just go with spec one which is the martial champion so one we'll click spec one we have now chosen a specialty and now you'll see that those passives are on the left hand side now once we spend a point you're going to notice that there's a progress bar that here that's going to go down the left hand side so we're just going to pick this one because it's going to give us an ability called the second wind um, so we'll click that you notice that we got a little bit of a progress bar going down then we'll click apply commit trait changes yes and we now have two new abilities in our hotbar one is sudden defense that we got by choosing the martial champion uh, line and the other one is the second wind ability and those have become uh, those are on our hotbar now and i'm gonna do a little bit of adjustment to my hotbar here real quick savage strikes wild attack we'll put that over here drag those around here okay now there are a couple of additional windows that you want to pay attention to here on your trait tree panel on the left hand side you're going to notice this one which is race traits now we don't have any of these available yet because you don't get your first one until level 13 you get one at 19 one at 25 31 and 37 and then here if you hover over these you'll be able to see what these racial traits are that you can earn in the game like the man sword bonus uh, damage bonus um, now if I were to earn one of these um, these are actually if I remember correctly they're part of deeds so we would need to go look in our deed journal to figure out how to earn these but we have a long time to earn those because you don't actually get your first one until level 13 but notice they're all grayed out right now and that's because we haven't actually earned any of our racial traits yet so that's something we have to work on long term there's also virtue traits which again is something that we haven't unlocked quite yet you get your first one at level 7 so we'll be doing that in the course of this overall um, uh, a tutorial but these are additional ways that you can enhance your characters and we will talk about that later on but I'm just showing you those here because we're in the window why not all right we need to talk to the champion trainer who is over here might as take a moment of your time all right. Now, if you've ever done this before, this is going to be your typical training dummy scenario where he wants to use wants you to use a specific ability on a training dummy. So we're going to just click accept. We're going to go over here. We'll go to a training dummy, and it says um, open tapping. This is another important component of the game. You've discovered an open tapping monster. Anyone can help kill this monster, and everyone who helps gets credit. Join the fray and collect your rewards. Basically, every mob in the game, if you come across a pig or an orc or a goblin out in the world. If you have engaged it or anyone else comes along and helps you engage it, everyone who engages with that target will get quest credit and, and item drops from it. So there's none of this old school, he who tags it gets all the rewards and stuff. So once you've targeted this, it says use the Savage Strikes ability, which is this one right here. 
Now, I need power and fervor to use that, and that's built up through combat. So we would start with the Swift Trike, use Wild Attack, and then now it becomes available. Swift Savage Strikes is now red. I can use it because I've built up two points of fervor. Boom. We've used it. All right. We have struck the training jummy with Savage Strikes, and now we can go turn in to the champion trainer. So we've just gotten our first side quest breadcrumb tip. Now here's what I was talking about earlier I wanted to show you guys as part of the tutorial. Notice that on my map right now on the upper right here we have a white arrow that is pointing us in the direction of the quest and if we hover over it it actually tells us the intro quest Remedy of the Kings. And if we open up our map it now shows a couple of different things because we have two objectives here. One is to complete a quest for Calder Cobb and the other is to gather King's Foil Leaves. So if we open up the map, it's going to show us those two objectives. Calder Cobb being the NPC represented by the ring icon on the map and the King's Foil Leaves represented by an area on the map within which we will find those leaves. And the top left being, of course, the arrow that represents where my character is. This is a basic layout of how you use the map in the game. Go ahead and hit that num lock button for auto run. And we're going to head out down the road. And remember we turned on auto loot earlier. So we're automatically looting the items from the wolves. I don't have to actually click on the corpses. And you'll notice I'm using my abilities 1 through 3. And notice how my character is walking a little funny right now. That's because he's crippled. So he has a negative 25% run speed and negative 37 might. It went away now. Uh, but that's a, it's a debuff that's represented by a visual animation in the game to show you that your character has been hindered somehow by something in combat. You can also fall off of things and take fall damage. We'll show you that in a little bit. So we're hitting that one, two, and now three, and now Dead Wolf. And here is King's Foil Plant. So here's the next tip, ladies and gentlemen, in the tutorial. When you come across an item that you need to interact with in the world, it will be represented by a text icon, a text uh, over the top of it, as well as this glowy sparkly effect that indicates that this is something to be interacted with. You also get the hand icon. Um, and in order to loot this, you would simply right click and we would then collect it, just like harvesting. And it says here, in your travels, you will be asked to collect certain items for your quest. Most of these items will be stored in your quest log. If you ever want to see how many of given items you have collected, um, you should navigate to your quest log and select the quest. This will then find a list of all the items you have so far collected for that quest. Uh, you'll also notice on the left, on the right hand side in the quest tracker here, it shows like one of four or three of four. So it very quickly and easily shows you here as well uh, how many items you have for a given quest. So for example, uh, you'll also get the pop-up, like defeated wolves four of four, so we know we've defeated, you know, four of the four wolves. Okay, so we need a couple more King's Foil plants. And we'll maybe get lucky here, because I don't think all of these wolves will attack us on sight, so we can just run up here and... Okay, and now it says we still need to search atop Bronway's Folly for the source of the wolves. So we're going to go ahead and run up to the top here. And if you were in doubt as to where you would need to go, you would open up your map and you would see a ring icon showing you where you need to go. And we're going to run up to the top. Huh, there's a strange banner atop the stairs here. Now it's glowing and it's become an interactable quest object. So we would move forward. We would right click that hold on before we do actually one thing i wanted i wanted to point out when we're hovering over this um also in the top right in your quest tracker it says use the black wolf banner to summon the offender but do not leave the platform so it's warning us don't leave so we're going to click it the wolf master approaches you must defeat him ha Colder Cobb told me you'd be paying me a visit. Now, do you see what he just did? That red square that he just threw down on the ground? That is a caltrips. And if we scroll down, you actually can see the caltrips on the ground represented visually. And if I stand within there, I'm going to be suffering 
a light injury. I'll take six common damage every few seconds, and I'm slowed because of the caltrips. So we'd actually want to move out of that to get rid of that, those effects, and now go into defending ourselves accordingly. All right, we have defeated the Black Wolf Wolfmaster. Hmm. Now our quest tracker is telling us we need to return to Call of Cobb and ask why he set us up to be ambushed. Hmm? Very good question. I would like to know that for sure. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I wanted to show you guys crippling. So if I run off of this, you notice that horrible sound that just happened and my character is now limping. And it says, you have falling injuries. Ah, oh, they went away too soon. I would I would need to fall off of, of a greater height. Let's do that real quick because I got, I actually want to show you guys that. So the height the height that you fall from depends on how long the debuff lasts for. Your run speed is lowered. You're unable to parry, unable to block, um, and your character will walk funny as if you have a broken leg. Um, try not to fall off of great heights, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal if you do, uh, but the debuff does last, uh, uh, you know, it, it can last up to a minute or so if you fall off great heights, and it affects your mounts and everything else, so. Oh, so we just got a ding to level three, and we are now being prompted to use the Lotro store. The Lotro store offers a wide variety of items and premium services that complement your journey throughout Middle-earth. You can visit the store at any time from the system menu. Visit the store often to view new and special offers. So the store is an interesting thing. We'll talk about this here during the tutorial video. Um, if you've never used the store before, um, it's a combination of cosmetic shop along with uh, quality of life features. But you can also find content for the game, quest packs and so on and so forth. Um, that you can purchase through here. Um, now the way you earn coins, these Lotro points that are up here at the top right, um, you can either buy those with real life currency or you could earn those through a VIP subscription where you get a certain amount of points per month. Um, when you are a VIP, you also get a discount on different things and then occasionally they will have, um, I think right now as they have a, a discount going on, it says 20% off XP boosts, acquisition boosts and more and then you can click on the sales and it would show you the things that are available for sale but all of these items that you can go through here um, if you're new to the Lotro, you know, things that are new to the Lotro store so like the the latest instance cluster that just dropped the further adventures of Eladin and Elro here the the Gundabad expansion now you could also buy these um, I believe outside of the game but you could buy them in through here the, the brawler class which I actually don't have unlocked on this character um, and then if you go into the account, they'll get your mithril coins, slots in storage. This is the one I was telling you guys earlier about with the inventory slots. This is where you would unlock your inventory slots for your character. But I've already done all of those, so uh, I don't have to. But here's also where you would get more additional cosmetic slots if you wanted more than just the two that the game comes with. Um, so yeah, going in here, there's lots of different cosmetics, uh, collections, buffs. All sorts of cool stuff. If you want to get into the mounts, there's tons of mounts available in the game, um, as well as in the store. Uh, but that's a whole other thing for another day. But that's a quick overview of the Lotro store. Oh, that was something I could tell you guys real quick. Um, so notice that um, right now... My character's auto-turning. If I turn him away, he's auto-turning towards the target. That is a toggleable option with the X button. So it's off now. So I could turn in any direction that I want, and I can I can face away from the target. Notice that I still have the wolf targeted. So if I turn that back on, he's going to turn around and face that target. That's a toggleable thing you can do with the X button. If you need, if you prefer to use the um, if you per prefer to have help targeting mobs you would turn the you would hit that x button to turn this on so that no matter which way you turn your character or the camera at the very least is automatically going to turn towards that to help you in combat scenarios tonight now here we get to choose a die reward now this is another aspect of the cosmetic part of the game because every piece of armor you have if we go back in here if we were to say left click on an item 
like we just I just left clicked on the I left clicked on the cloak. Uh, that would be sorry to make this contextually appropriate. Control and left click brings up the dressing room tab, and then you can see all the various pieces of your of your armor and the default colors of on now if i wanted to adjust my cloak as an example i would choose the back color and there are all of these different dyes that you can uh, either find in the game or make in the game in this case we're being given a few options here so violet navy olive rust or gray so we would look at these and say what do these look like um well let's look at the navy oh that would change the color of my cloak to navy well what about it says olive it would change it to olive. What about rust? It would change that to rust. What about gray? Uh, it would change it to gray. So it shows you the different colors that you could choose, and, and you can apply that to any of the different armor pieces to change the cosmetics of your of your armor. So that's another cool little cosmetic feature that you can do um, in the game. Now, the best dyes in the game, if you notice here on the colors, the drop downs are like Evanim Blue, Forest Green, Rivendell Green, Walnut Brown, Moria Silver. Uh, dark mossy green, Imlitus fallen leaf, twilight purple. Those are all crafted and they have rare components. So if you want to do that, I believe scholars are the uh, ones who make dye, but we'll do a crafting guide another day. So in the meantime, we'll just pick the gray dye, finish now. Now it's, it skipped the other intro, uh, the other uh, pop-up for some reason there well we got multiple pop-ups and it's it's i have it automatically clicked to not show the other ones so i apologize for that there's multiple things that just happened which we need to read through okay uh all right so the first and most important thing that just happened is we finished the tutorial quest and we were given the ability to use milestones Everywhere you go in the world, you're going to find a milestone. This can be used to bind your character to a location. Now, down here on your hotbar, you're going to notice an ability that popped up called Return Home. Currently, that home's location is Archit. You'll notice that if you hover over it, it tells you that. If you want to change your location, you would right-click on a milestone and it would prompt you to select a milestone destination skill to bind. You would click that. You would click the bind button. It would prompt you to confirm that you want to set this location as your bind point for the return home skill. You would click yes. And then you would get a notification down in the bottom left that the location is now bound to your milestone skill. And you notice that the icon of your return to home button has changed to return to name of the place that you have bound your milestone to. Currently that's Archit, so it says return to Archit within Breeland. Um, the next thing that happened is we were given a passive skill novice, which is just to clarify that we've entered the real world and we are now beyond the tutorial series of the game. Um, and we're actually in, in the, the world as it exists. And we got a prompt that we have received mail, um, and uh, we can go to a mailbox right here, click that mailbox, um, and we have different mail items that we can open up uh, and read through. We get a letter of commendation from John Brackenbrook. Okay. Once you open this up, you can read the text and you notice that there's an item attached, a gift pack. You would then detach the item and it's going to put that into your inventory like so. It also says that you completed a deed. See your deed log for more information. You can access your deed log by accessing the start menu in the lower left corner of the bottom bar. That's over here. This goes to the deed log. The deed log it keeps track of your personal accomplishments throughout the world of Middle Earth. And you can check here to see which deeds are progressing and which ones you complete and what titles or traits you can earn for completing them. Now remember, we talked earlier about these racial traits. Each race trait has its own unique set by completing specific deeds. And if we were to go over and come over to the deeds window that we've opened up now, on the right now we're currently on the class deeds. If you go to the bottom, there's these tabs, race and social, epic, or reputation. Now, if we're on the class deeds, um, you're going to get... Um, we've completed a deed. I'm going to close all this stuff down. We're learning about outfits, which we've already talked about. Mounts. Uh, which we'll get into here in a minute. I need to move that window over here. 
but for the moment let's continue the deeds discussion there's different deeds for the areas of the world but right now what we want to talk about very quickly is the race and social um you would be able to go in here and and look at these for your uh, class and so on and so forth and and figure those out as you get deeper into the game but there's different types across the game so you can check those out at your leisure um it says here that mounts you now have the ability to ride a basic steed you should seek out the horse master of hang stasser in breland if you wish to buy your starter Bree horse pony after you purchase a mount you may want to map the action of summoning it to a key which we did already um, there's a shortcut called dismount remount located in the options for key mounting it also remembers the last mount last mount that you used and then middle earth is a massive place Talks about the milestone skill. I'm going through reputation. Not hugely important for the purpose of this tutorial video. Um, but the mount one is. Uh, because it used to be that you had to do quests and all these other things to get mounts. But now you get a mount right off the bat from doing that quest that they prompted you in the Lotro store. Um, and uh, we've been given a starter mount. This little extra steed. But if you wanted to get a mount as it just prompted us, you would need to go to the Hangsters or Farm. That's another way to get it. Uh, but that's something we could dive into for a future video. Um, essentially, now that we've done this, um, you can run around and pick up all the quests that are available here. Because now we're in the actual real world. This is the next, uh, uh, the next part of the epic quest. This is the prologue. Um, and then from here, um, we would go out into the world and you head out from Archit and you go down to Combe and from Combe, you get into Bree and from Bree, you get into the Bree lands. And there's just a whole wide world of middle earth awaiting you because beyond the Bree lands, there's the entirety of Eriador and beyond Eriador, we have Eregion and beyond Eregion, we have Moria and beyond Moria, we have the Dimral Dale and Keras Galadhon and Lothlorien, and Mirkwood, and beyond to Rovanion, and beyond to Rohan, <laughs> and Gondor, and Mordor, and so much more. The world of Middle-earth is a massive place, and the Lord of the Rings Online is a massive, massive, massive game. You have just taken your first tiny, tiny steps here in Eriador, in Breland, in Archit, your very first tiny steps. From here, there's a lot more to see and do. So, hopefully you're inspired to continue playing the game and hopefully you've been inspired to not only like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so that you get more videos like this delivered to you, but hopefully you've been inspired to join the channel as a member. Memberships start at $3 a month. We do private videos, polls, and the like. It's a great way to support me and help me continue to do this full-time. I am fully supported by the community. Uh, you can also do super chats on live streams and premieres or super thanks on uploaded videos and YouTube shorts. Those are uh, donations where you can pick your own amount or YouTube has some pre-programmed amounts. You just hit the button down there in the chat window and go from there. Don't forget... We also have a Patreon page if you want to get involved with the point-and-click adventure game, book series, and tabletop game that I have with my wife and my brother. And we have a Discord if you want to come hang out with us and play games with us, because we do play Lotro, Star Wars Republic, and other games together. Until next time, everybody, stay safe. Hopefully you've enjoyed this adventure. I hope you're going to be playing Lord of the Rings a lot more. Hopefully this guide helped you get into this game in a way that you've never been involved before. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe and happy gaming.